Why is the gate closed? I want to go to the lower town. Curfew. After dark, residents of the upper town can only enter the lower town with special permission. Who came up with that? Council leader Van Buren. She's worried about the well-being of the residents of the upper town. And where do I get one of these permits? Nowhere today. You can go to the town hall and apply for one there tomorrow. But, but I'm supposed to meet Remy in the inn tonight. Tough. There are posters over there spreading lies about the Archmage. So? Those are lies. Anyone could read them. A couple might even believe them. Nah, what can you do? You, you, you could remove them. I would do it myself, but I don't have any water or a spatula and, and it's your job. <sighs> All right then. Tomorrow. I've got way too much to do now. So, what are you doing? I'm guarding the town. I'm the town guard. Ah. It looks like Bill the Merchant's crane is finally finished. It's been two days. He's been transporting things up and down all day. And you inspected the goods? Why should I? Isn't there a toll on transporting goods like alcohol and pipeweed and other stuff from the upper town to the lower town? There are real crimes going on in this town. I don't even have the resources to take care of them. Bill said something about bribing the town guard. Would you know anything about that? <laughs> That's an outrageous allegation. The town guard is not bribable. That's good. Otherwise, you'd probably have too much gold. I mean, if no more goods go through the gate here, then no one needs to be bribed, eh? That's... Right. Hmm. So you're saying Bill is cheating the state of its well-earned taxes because he's smuggling goods into the lower town? Do you want to ban him from running the crane? No. Bill and his colleagues are very influential. Anyway, no one said anything about a ban, did they? Hmm. No. I've got another idea. But how can I do it? What do you need to do to stop the smuggling? Someone would have to mark one of Bill's barrels of alcohol and then order it from the lower town. If the said mark barrel turns up there tonight without the bribe, uh, tax having been paid, then we have our evidence. You can be really clever, Mr. Shieldhand. The only problem is, I can't leave this place. I have to guard the town, you see. But you, you can fulfil your civic duty and help the town guard. Civic duty? You want me to do your job? Not for nothing, of course. What do you want in return? I would like unrestricted access to the lower town. For a minute, I thought you wanted a pony or something similarly useless. What makes you say that? You say strange things sometimes. Have you never noticed? Yeah, but a pony? Admit it. You were thinking about it. Hmm. Maybe so, but I would still prefer to have free access to the lower town. Excellent. You help me convict Bill, and I give you the key to the gate. Eh, yeah, deal.
Mr. Shield's hand. Mr. Professor. I've marked a barrel of Bill's brandy. Excellent. Then go down to the lower town and order a barrel and we'll see what happens. You mean I no longer need a special permit? Correct. You're now on an official mission for the town guard. Bill also built the outhouse. Remy says he's rented this entire strip along the town wall. Maybe he couldn't bear the thought of leaving his stand unattended for a few minutes a day. Psst! Bill! Who's there? And what do you want? It's... it's me! Mm. Mr. Shieldhand, I want to talk to you about my bribe. Or lack of, to be precise. Why do you call yourself Mr. Shieldhand? Because I am... Anton! Anton Shieldhand is my name. And I... want a bribe. <laughs> Peachy, is that you? It's bloody dark down there. <clears throat> yes, it's me. Petey, why are you putting on a funny voice all of a sudden? Um... <laughs> you really are a crazy dog. So what can I do for my favourite errand boy? I need a barrel of brandy for the inn. No problem. What's the password? What about you? Do you even know the password? Uh, of course. But that's hardly the point. Should I buy my illegal goods from just anyone? All right then. The password is marmalade. The password is marmalade? No, it's not. I just wanted to wind you up. Well, what's the real password? I... Uh... I, I don't know the password. Why not? Aren't you Petey? Step into the light. Yes, I am. But I forgot the password. Ha! <laughs> That's just like you. Ask in the inn. The owner knows it. Fine. Wow, a two-headed ogre. I've heard of those. I never thought I'd actually ever see one of those in real life. <laughs> or smell it. Hello. Ha, ha, ha. Little mini-man. But, Blout, that's a guest. Welcome, noble sir. How can we help you? I have heard that you buy your alcohol from Bill. We don't have much choice. He's the only trader who'll sell us alcohol. Expensive! You're right there. The prices are unashamedly high. Seastone is a big town with lots of merchants. Why is Bill the only one selling alcohol? 
Since the town was virtually besieged with refugees, there's been no way for the farmers and traders from the surrounding areas to get through with their ox carts. Right. And Bill gets his supplies by air. Just the same, there's still more than one merchant in the upper town, isn't there? Of course. Bill trades alcohol, another trades in lamp oil, the next one in mana potions. That way they avoid competition and set any price they want. I smashed them all! We are upset about it. Did someone forget that jacket on the chair over there? Oh, it belongs to a young guest. He, well, got into a fight with Mr Shieldhand of the town guard and was arrested. Hooligan! Lock up immediately! What happened? He was quietly drinking his beer. Shieldhand came in, recognised him as one of the protesters and wanted to search him. The young man refused, said he hadn't done anything wrong and wouldn't let anyone search him without reason. Then bang! Trenching a lockdown! <laughs> and the jacket? It's been hanging there ever since. We're keeping it as a deposit until he's paid for his beer. You're a two-headed ogre, right? Well, I am an ogre. And me too. So, you two are ogres. My name is Zloth, mage, philosopher, scholar. And bag of wind. That is Blunt, my brother. He is... Me, Basher. Me, best things up. Do you own the inn? I bought it. Blout is just my employee. Blout bought two. Yes, but then you lost your half at poker. Now it all belongs to me. Blout not give you his half. Blout best laugh if he tried to take away. If you touch me, I'll have you thrown in jail. have one or two votes in the election. One would think that as we have two voices, we should also have two votes. Unfortunately, the town council sees things differently. And who do you want to vote for? Archmage Alistair, of course. Council... Mrs Van Buren. Little woman says how it is. Blout likes it when things are uncomplicated. Tax down! More work for all! See stone number one! But you don't buy it. I'd also prefer it if our problems were solved quicker. But Van Buren stands for things staying as they are or regressing. Neither has ever helped. Would you perhaps be interested in a barrel of brandy? I'm sure that Bill would deliver today. No, thank you. We still have stock. And we have much fewer guests since the barricade was erected. But I need a password. The password for Bill's crane capers? If you were one of his trustworthy customers, you'd know it. How about we try and bring down Bill and his exorbitant prices? Hmm. What are you thinking of? Bash him? Well, let's just say I could put the long arm of the law onto him. Shield hand? <laughs> Tin man. I don't know. The plan is absolutely Anton proof. We're all set. I just need Bill's password and bam, we have him by his muttony legs. Hmm. And it won't be traced back to us? I really don't want to be paying even more for our alcohol in the future. It's a secret covert operation shrouded in secrecy. Shrouded in secrecy? Hmm. He has earned it. Oh, all right then. The password is gold won't make you happy. Really? Here, a bag of silver for the brandy. It will be worth it if it scuppers business for Bill and his band of ne'er-do-wells. Thanks. Then take care, you two. One, 
both. So long. Bye. The jacket belongs to a protester. It has several patches and a badge pinned on the front. No one noticed. Headmaster Block seems to be counting gold. Lots of gold. I wonder where he got it. Hello, Headmaster Block. Weathervane, haven't you got things to attend to at school? I'm sort of still on the job. I'm, uh, I'm just getting some tools from the town. Fine. I have to admit that your performance today did not disappoint me. Really? I didn't expect anything. Thus, I was neither surprised nor disappointed that your results do not look good when compared to those of a qualified specialist. doing there, if I might ask? Surely you can't earn that much gold as a school headmaster, right? Of course not. The gold is for the council leader's election campaign. I'm her party treasurer. Some people want the council leader to win the election very badly. Of course. They see their donation as an investment in the future, and they know how to make a difference. I think that you're unfairly giving me difficult tasks just so I can fail at them and then you have an excuse to get rid of me. Oh, I could get rid of you with very simple tasks, Weathervane. It's not your fault. You shouldn't have been put in a position in which you are confronted with tasks that are beyond your schooling and your abilities. Have to be going. I'll be expecting you tomorrow after the opening ceremony for a staff appraisal meeting. So we can talk about your performance. Very well. My golem and I are going to show you. Someone has put a bucket of water next to the fire pit. Security isn't normally a priority in Seastone, but with all these wooden houses, I'm glad to see an exception. So, Petey, what's the password? Gold can't buy happiness. As long as it's jangling in someone else's purse. Absolutely right. So, you wanted a barrel of brandy. Right. That'll be a small bag of silver. One barrel of brandy coming up. That's it. That's the barrel with the mark. What did you say? Oh, uh, nothing. Just thanks for the delivery. As long as you pay, I deliver. Take care. Bill didn't pay any taxes on that barrel. And those taxes build roads, care for the sick and elderly, and pay for my apple. Shield Hand won't be impressed. Sloth paid for that barrel fair and square, so it belongs to him. He should collect it before it disappears.
Hello, Sloth. Ah, Wilbur. Greetings. Bill delivered the barrel without paying tax on it. And that's supposed to cause him problems? Mr Shieldhand is arresting him right now. Or oh, talking to him. Oh, oh, something. Those two don't particularly like each other, but they are dependent on the same people. They wouldn't, um, blout. Bash each other? No. Bite the hand that feeds. Right. Ah, oh, if only I was there. Then I could make sure they played by the rules. See you, love. So long. And? Bill has delivered the marked barrel. And has therefore cheated me. Just you wait. I'm going to get the bribe money I'm due and then some. Hey! Hello? What about my exemption? Hey, Mr Shieldhand, we had a deal. Hmm. And now Shieldhand's busy negotiating his bribe with Bill and I'm stuck down here. Bill Storm, during the day he sells stuff from the upper town that you can't normally get down here. Hmm, a wooden box full of old tools. Some sort of metal clamps, a hammer, some wire. Probably Bill uses the stuff to maintain his stand. Seastone has grown quite organically over the centuries. There are doors behind which there are only walls, staircases that lead to nowhere. Maybe a house was supposed to go here, but the builder changed his mind. This is one of the entrances to the underground world of the rats. Rats represent one of the town's largest population groups. But many don't think of them as real people and they don't have many rights. Remy and the Archmage have been trying to change that for a long time. But some think that the rats entered the town illegally and consider them vermin. At the moment, more people live outside the town than inside it. Most of them are refugees. There were days when the wagons were lined up nose bag to bumper and the road was full of them as far as the eye could see. This looks like a hatch. Hello? Aloha. Are you talking to the enemy? Who are you? My name is... Shh. If you tell an agent of the government our real names, you'll endanger the entire organization. What do you want to call us? Hmm... My name is John. N no, Paul. Next to me is, um, J-Stop. Your name is Paul? But you're a woman. Gender is just one of the fictions indoctrinated by the patriarchal society. Oh, really? I didn't know that. What are you protesting about, then? We're protesting against exploitation, against discrimination, against poverty, and against the destruction of the environment. Wow. Those are all important issues. What do you plan on doing? Uh, we're already doing something. We're demanding that things change. We've made a petition. 
and we're putting together a list of demands. We're still working on the wording. Problems with the neutrality guidelines. How far have you got? Dear brothers, stroke, sisters in arms, other forms of resistance are available. Fellow countrymen, countrywomen, country transsexuals, country gender nonconformists. Um, getting back to the whole making a change thing. If you want to make a difference, you can write like on a piece of paper and pass it through the hatch. Then everyone will know you support our cause. I talked to a prisoner in the upper town. He's one of yours, isn't he? A victim of the state's power. Our first martyr. He's not dead yet. And if he got the cake, he'll be back with us soon. Cake? Shh. If you're for justice and change, you'll probably be voting for Archmage Alistair, right? The election's a joke. One corrupt politician replacing another. And behind the scenes, it's always the same people pulling the strings. That may be true of the council leader, but the Archmage... Big man has got them eating out their hands. Exactly. The magic industrial multinational that was responsible for the war. So you're entering your own candidate? That's pure daft. There's no point. We're doing the only thing that will lead to success. We're protesting. Maybe I can pass on some of your demands to the Archmage and we can see what can be done. We demand that no one in Aventasia should ever be poorer than average. Isn't that mathematically impossible? Not at all. If every resident got exactly the same amount of gold, then no one is poorer than the average. Hmm. But if everyone gets the same amount of gold without having to do anything for it, why would anyone bother to earn the gold in the first place? Only someone who belongs to the rich elite could ask something like that. Did you build the barricade? Aye, that's right. Do you like it? Yeah, it's beautiful. But it kind of blocks the whole street, doesn't it? We're going to dry you lot out till you give us what we want. But the upper town is supplied by airships. We won't move an inch until you stand starving and freezing before us. But we've got plenty of food. And if my rabbit sheep didn't always take my bed, I wouldn't freeze either. I told you it doesn't work like that. We are protesting here and there's nothing you can do about it. Everything all right in the lower town? Couldn't be better. The fire of protest is stoking up hell. People are being drawn closer together by a common noble goal. And because of a lack of space. Wished. Why did you set up the barricade here and not at the gate? That would have given you loads of extra space. And the inn would have been on our side too. Our barricade is more visible this way. The elite should quake at the sight of our resolve. I don't think they're doing that. You're clearly trying to drive a wedge between us, agent. See? The fat cats are trying to sabotage us. They're afraid. That's a good sign. Have to be going. May the protest never end. Remy looks tired. I think the election campaign and the current situation in the town are really taking their toll on him. Hello, Remy. If it isn't the magic school's new star professor. How was your first day, Wilbur? Headmaster Block is very mean to me. He gives me loads of difficult tasks. All of which you've solved, knowing you. Yes, but then he gives me new tasks. They're even more difficult. And even if I work through the night, I still couldn't finish them all. No one could. Interesting and curious. If he wanted to represent you as the Archmage's bad choice, 
that he wouldn't have given you exercises that are clearly impossible. People would realize what kind of game was being played and the trick would backfire. Did you notice anything else? Yes. I surprised Headmaster Block in the staff room as he was rummaging through a desk drawer. But he was startled when I spoke to him, like I caught him doing something. He didn't want you to see him fiddling around in his own desk drawer. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? At first there was the unsolvable exercises, and now the desk drawer. Something's not right. That's what I think too. The council leader was standing up by the new lottery drum, dictating tomorrow's edition of the lookout to a reporter. Yes, she has the lookout under her thumb. She's a horrible piece of work. Ambitious, stubborn and unscrupulous. A dangerous combination. Comes from a humble background but got her feet under old Van Buren's table. Tried to persuade him to do all sorts of new business deals and start a career in politics. Many say he died so young because he finally wanted to be left in peace. How did she end up as the Archmage's most promising challenger? The Archmage doesn't want the most important posts in government to go automatically to the richest citizens anymore, but rather to the most competent people, chosen by the people. And of course the nobility and the merchants don't like that one bit. They were seething when they found out about it, but there was nothing they could do to start with. The Archmage was too popular, untouchable. But then along came Sybil Van Buren, and she had a plan. The election was to be approved, and set for one year's time. One year in which she put up obstacles in the Archmage's way and sabotaged his politics in any way she could. Her only aim was to make him look bad. By the gods, how I'd load it if she succeeded. Archmage Alistair gave me a magic slate. Hmm, that's just like him. He likes magical playthings. That's not all. The slate advised me to build a golem to help me with my work. A golem? They're very strong, so it could help me with a lot of my work. Yes, but I was thinking of something else. Think about it. We agree the Archmage is the most powerful living wizard. Of course. No one could touch a hair on his head with a magical attack. But brute force, a stone to the head. A knife in the ribs. That could be a possibility. But now imagine that he had a bodyguard. A big chap, hard as stone. Such as a, a golem, for example. Exactly. Even a troll wouldn't get past the golem. But the best thing, golems are absolutely loyal. They simply cannot help but follow their master's commands. And if I order it to defend the Archmage with its life... Then that's exactly what it'll do, and no one would get past it. That sounds fantastic. Can you manage that? Building a golem and bringing it to life? I'll sure try, at any rate. I'll get it to complete the Headmaster's stupid tasks first, and then guard the Archmage. The Headmaster and the Council Leader have come up against the wrong gnome. So what do we do now? Keep an eye on Headmaster Block and see what happens? Show near the elections. A supporter of the council leader behaving suspiciously in the vicinity of the Archmage. No, too risky. We can't wait. So you're going to have a look for yourself? Poof, I'd like to, but perhaps that's precisely their plan. An officially unofficial employee of the Archmage sniffing about in the office of one of his political opponents. Wouldn't be good if word got out. A first-rate scandal. But what about a teacher looking for a form in the staff room? A teacher who is in the school because the headmaster has given him tasks to be done. <laughs> Normally I would try to discourage you. But the Archmage is visiting the school tomorrow. If his opponents are planning something, we have to expose them tonight. I'll do it. I'll have a look around and get back to you if I discover anything. All right, but be careful, Wilbur. Then let's not waste any time. I'll build a golem bodyguard for the Archmage and have a look around the Headmaster's office. Good idea. 
and let me know as soon as you find anything peculiar. No heroics, Wilbur Weathervane. I'll be careful. I'll go back underground. I want to find out about the dark magic the Archmage has been sensing for days. Good luck. You and Van Buren will not succeed with your plan. You may have great and powerful friends, but the Archmage has small and cleverer ones. What can I do for you? What can you tell me about golems? Golems are powerful, magical beings. They are made of clay or stone, have unbelievable strength, and can work non-stop. Are they living beings or machines? They are tools for mages. They do heavy physical work for them. The mage inserts a piece of paper with commands written on it in its mouth, and the golem carries out these commands. Ah, where can I get a golem? Or do I have to build one myself? Golems are very rare and expensive, but their construction isn't difficult in principle. In principle? The body of a golem is a kind of statue of stone, clay, or other inorganic materials. In order to bring the lifeless statue to life, a spell written in magic ink must be placed in its mouth. And nobody knows this formula. That is not correct. I know the spell. But how? Ah, Master Alistair! He must have sensed that I'd need a golem to help me. The body should be easy enough to build, and you know the spell, so what's the problem? The spell must be written in magic ink. Some of the ingredients are very rare. Ah, Piffle, I'm good at finding rare things. What's the best way to go about building a golem's body? A golem needs a torso of stone, clay, loam or similar. It also needs strong arms in order to carry heavy weights. And a couple of strong legs to move around on. Correct. The head of a golem must be made of clay and needs a mouth in which command notes can be inserted. Hmm, that means I'll have to make the head myself. Unless I just happen to find a finished golem head lying around somewhere. What ingredients are needed for this magic ink? Does it have to be brewed like a magic potion? Like, stir three times to the left and then four quick turns to the right? I hope not. No. A simple mixing of the ingredients is sufficient. However, precise quantities are crucial. Okay. What are the ingredients? Exactly two centiliters of crocodile tears, exactly 12 drops of dragon sweat, and exactly one sea stone small ounces of soot. What in the world is 12 teen? And dragon sweat? It's kind of hard to make a dragon sweat. Correct. Dragon sweat is very rare. Eh, I'll think of something. Can you list the ingredients for me? No problem. You can see the list by looking at me in the inventory. What do you mean, looking at you in the inventory? You'll manage. I might have some more questions for you later. And I might answer. Hello, Sloth. Ah, Wilbur. Greetings. If you're a mage, Sloth, do you know how to build golems? I've never tried. You have? Tried long time to build golems. Just too stupid. That's completely untrue. That was just playing around. So, I want to build a golem, and I know the right incantation. Can you help me build one? I... no. I don't want anything to do with it. Psst! Really, Burr? Yes? What are you whispering about? I don't like whispering behind my back. 
Snuff always eavesdrop. Do you and Blout keep many secrets from each other? Not particularly. I just don't like it when Blout fiddles about behind my back. It usually ends in catastrophe. Maybe you're too hard on him. He was going to juggle with kitchen knives this afternoon. I noticed just in time. Would have worked. No, it wouldn't. And they are my fingers too. Zlov tell Blout off. Zlov always annoyed. With good reason. The pub, all this work. And on top of all that, I have to play babysitter. I lost track of time with all that ranting and now I've missed the bakery. All your fault, Blout. The bakery up by the guardhouse? I go there myself. Which bakery do you usually go to? I like the one up by the guardhouse myself. Oh, they have those wonderful chocolates. I treat myself to one or two every night. <laughs> you see, Sloth got fat. First of all, that's not true. And secondly, it's Flab born of frustration because I have to put up with you. See you, Sloth. So long. That's that terrible boy from class. Pretty late for a little guy like him. Um, young guy. Hey! Whoa! You're... you're Wilbur Weathervane! Out to make fun of me, are you? You're probably upset after I proved that I know more about magic than you thought at school this morning. What? I... What are you talking about, Master Weathervane? You were pretty cheeky at school this morning. Which school? There you go again, trying to make fun of me. But Master Weathervane, I'd never... This morning in the mage school, you were trying to make me feel uncomfortable and look stupid in front of the other students. The mage school? In the upper town? I'm not even allowed there. I wasn't born in Seastone. And I'm certainly not important enough to enter the upper town without a good reason. You mean to tell me you weren't in my class this morning? In your class? To become a wizard? That would be so cool! I still believe you're trying to make fun of me. Or do you have a twin? Not that I know of, Master Weathervane. Hey, perhaps someone was controlling my thoughts without me realising. Now I'm sure you're trying to make fun of me. No, it is possible. Not all of the sorcerers, necromancers and lawyers in the Shadow Army were captured, right? You look like you're training for an important battle. No, I'm reenacting your battle. How you and Captain Bonnet and Princess Ivo defeated the Archwitch, Mortroga, in the Black Tower. Oh, really? It must have been the greatest battle of all time. The solitary heroes, surrounded by monsters, standing up to the leader of the Shadow Army and her son, Monkus. Boom! Bash! Ja! Well, maybe it wasn't quite that dramatic. Ten years of war, the artefact of divine fate, and suddenly, peace. What's not dramatic about that?